come from a union type family, but that works hard on the sides. That works on the weekends, you know what I mean? Never stops working. I'm an I'm a only child, but both my parents, you know, were hardcore workers. And I think that that's where all my hustle comes from, watching them. And with Cannabis Man, how did you develop <laughs> Probably like uh, sixth grade, you know, into cannabis. Uh, sixth grade summer, smoked some weed, with the Last Brothers. Uh, that's their last name, Last Brothers. Uh, ever since then, I, I knew where the weed was, man. Grandma had that weed. My family had that weed. I was selling it as a very young age. It was part of the hustle, part of the lifestyle. I, I think they wanted me on Ritalin, you know, and uh, cannabis was better for me and I was self-medicating with it at a, at a young age, 12, 13, 14, heavily smoking cannabis at 14, uh, and finding it to where I can give it to somebody else. My mom always told me to find a need and fill it, you know, to, to work, to make your own money, and I saw weed as one of those. All my friends smoked it, so if I could just come up with it and I could uh, keep smoking it free, and I'd at least come up with my own smoke and still buy myself a Happy Meal on the same day. You know what I mean? I grew up in the Bay Area, the East Bay, Contra Costa County. Um, I spent my weekends in Mendocino you know, procuring from people and taking that home. You know, I come up with a cash that I hustled and I'd go back home with a little bud. And I'd divvy that out. Live life. Kind of hard to tell about that, you know, because that's prior days to any of this legal shit. I made it happen all of my life. And I'm gonna keep making it happen now in this new legal life. But I don't, I don't really think what they're doing with this legal life is, is right compared to what we used to have. Even just the 215 era days, you know, having your, uh, your, your collective with a bunch of scripts. I had that. That worked well for me. That was something that I could give to anybody that I had around me. And then that person could get their collective scripts. So anything I pass to you, you could pass to so-and-so as long as they had their script. And it was a good train. You know, and it was good to be around. I'm glad I, I was at least part of that. The first club I ever went to was in 1998 at uh, Berkeley Patients uh, Berkeley Patients Club down there in San Pablo in the Dome. I was a little kid, you know, hitting a volcano with my mom. Uh, my mom smoked, so it was always been kind of kind of cool in the family, especially with Grandma. <laughs> I just wanted to keep working into something I love. I didn't want to have to give this up for another uh, career. I didn't want to have to go to drywall. I didn't want to have to go back to land surveying. I wanted to, I wanted to stay in cannabis. And I was at, at the Grange in Willits, and I heard some people speaking. And you know, Swami was in there that day. And it was very like a uh, farmer, very few, uh, growers in there and they were talking about Flo Kana coming in with all this money and brands and how legalization is going to change our our whole landscape and I, I was listening to these people and I, I, the only other person I seen in there was you know Casey from Happy Days and Swami and, and, a, and a whole bunch of people that really weren't about cannabis except uh, some of the people that were creating the Flo Kana company and it made me really want to uh, make something for my farm, for my house, for my family that's been in this for a long time. You know, why not uh, have my, my chance too? I've been in this for, since I was a baby, you know what I mean? So to just let other people come in and claim it and take it, I, I wanted my piece too. I didn't want to have to stop. And I, I figured they'd have enough money and regulation to kind of squash our uh, opportunities in our traditional market and really just kind of make it impossible for us to have that. If you look at big business and you see how business does, they come in and they squash all other competitors. They take in, they lower the price, they make it impossible for anybody to compete. All of those people that are trying to compete fall off and then what you're left with is a bunch of people wanting to get employed. And a bunch of people that have to now be employed by this one company that's a huge company that now had lowered the market 
and now no one else can stand a chance, and now you all have to work for this one big-ass company. So I just wanted to be able to have what's, what is that fucking American dream, you know what I mean? To be able to work off my property, make my money off my property, and stay there as much as possible and not have to leave it. I want to I wanna make an income from my land, from the earth, from the connection I have from my garden. You know, it's pretty amazing when I can make a seed every year and, and grow a new seed, have a new genetic, wait for it to grow, smoke that weed, feel all the intention that I put in, the time and the effort that I put to make that thing happen. You know, there's a lot that go into it. To all the farmers here that create their, their paradise, their Eden on earth, you know, that's what this is, you know? And uh, they're creating something that's gonna feed their soul, not just their belly, not just their mind, it's gonna feed their soul. And it's also gonna reach, that intent will reach other people. That intent will, will, will manifest in someone else's reality that smokes our herbs. You know what I mean? They're gonna feel a little bit of that. And maybe we can change a little bit of this, this, uh, this planet we have and fight against these corporations through our small farmers, uh, well-deserved flour, you know? And kind of hold our little space, man, whatever it is, top shelf, bottom shelf, whatever fucking shelf you want to talk about. We can get on the top shelf, we should have the best weed in the world. <laughs> you know, none of that indoor really compares to the highs that we get. I tell people that the high that you will experience from a, a sun-grown, full-term plant is something that'll put you back to the child days, something that you smoked on when you were a kid and it got you so high, you were like, what do we have to eat, you know what I mean? And you're like going through the munchie thing, you know what I mean? And, and you hear that from people when they've been smoking indoor for a long time, and then they get a chance to smoke some good sun-grown, quality cure, you know, prepared properly, you know what I mean? And it still has a nose, still has a smell, still has that full flavor, full body, you know? And uh, they actually get so high, they feel like they're a kid. They're like, what? <laughs> that's the feeling I want to feel, you know, all the time, actually. I, I feel like in my life, that's, that's my whole, like, way of like, how, how can I, feel like a child again, that happiness, that, that willingness, that openness, that more love, you know, like how children are. If we could all just kind of bring that out of ourselves, I want that for myself, actually. I don't, everybody teach their own, but I want that. And I want to be able to produce off my property the love and the bud that I got and give it to others. I've sold in the hood, man, all my life, man. Oakland, South City. I got, you know, a good rep when it comes to actual people in, in the hood. But uh, I haven't put myself in too much dangerous situations, you know. I've, I've kept myself in a, in a good situation. I've gotten caught up before by some, uh, some dirty cops that literally held my, uh, you know, threw me in for the weekend. I got out on OR and uh, they didn't even file. They tried to, uh, tried to watch me and try to, try to snatch me up, but they ended up getting busted on their own. And I was in, uh, in Costa Costa. And now they had a group of them, just like what's happening right now here in Mendo. You know, you got, they're, they're, they're being looked into, you know? Because there's a lot of dirt out there. It's a big gang. You gotta watch who you talk about, you know? But, uh, you know, I've been riding the gauntlet all my life. <laughs> you know, riding an inconspicuous whip. You know, I'm trying not to stay on, in the limelight, you know, and now life is totally different. Now we want it. We actually need it. You know, we can't do without it anymore. You know, this marketing, what we have to do is all part of it. We have to show who the fuck we are. But we do still have to watch out what the fuck we do say, because you never know what this will lead to. I got too many fake profiles online now slanging. Makes me wonder how this is gonna turn out in the future, man. I put all this this content out of me slanging, me me working, me doing, you know, and all this herb and everybody else trying to make money on this this other market, making fake profiles. I don't know how about you. I don't know how many fake profiles you have online of people in all countries trying to slang on your face, slang on your name, and then I don't know if that's gonna come back and harm me too. You know what I mean? I don't know if I'm gonna be able to travel in the future if this federal uh, regulation, <laughs> this lock that they have on everybody right now that we're being like willingly doing to ourselves, 
when we really should be just deschedulizing and giving it to the people like a fucking tomato. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, 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 it's tough to talk about any times that we have had that aren't on record, aren't on paper, you know, what you've been through. There's a lot of Bay Area people that got hustled, man. The Bay Area breeds hustle. They did. I'm an 80s baby. I don't know how I come from it, man. I grew up listening to a lot of, you know, Bay Area rap, all hustle music, you know. And for me, I think that's what the Bay Area had bred at that time, you know. And I just think I come from a time of pure hustle and, and, and don't quit. I got a positive attitude that's just in my soul. I have a connection that, with a higher power that I can't break. And I feel like that, that is going to help me throughout my life. I feel secure. I feel like I have a place. I do belong. And we all do. We all have our own place. And I keep trying to get more people to step up like me and stand up. Get out there, bro. Push that brand. Push that brand. That's all we got nowadays, man. It's this name. At least we can say something, you know? Get rid of some of that shame. You know, a lot of years, I'm sure you understand, the, the hidden shame that you went through where you couldn't express who the fuck you were. You had to lie about what you did. You know, I always had my, I always had my grow. My indoor grow, I worked my job. Nobody knew what the fuck I did. Nobody even knew where the fuck I lived. You know what I mean? I didn't let everybody know whether you were lucky if you knew where the fuck I lived after, after, after high school, you know what I mean? Nobody knew where the fuck I was at. And that's how you wanted to live. And now, being open, being kind, being genuine, being loving, you know, like, just uh, increases all of that good shit, you know, in life, man. It takes away that, that hidden stress, that hidden shame. Kind of makes me free to be me a little bit more, you know, a little wild, a little more free, a little outgoing. I was way less outgoing in life, you know, before, you know. I had so many pictures hiding the face, you know, not showing that. You know, being mad at somebody for taking a picture in one of my facilities or my grows. You know, being upset, like you can't take your phone around that shit, man. You know, to being willingly and openly inviting you to come talk to me about this shit. Life has changed, man, drastically hard. You know, and, and we're just riding this wave. And I, I just want to enjoy my life while I ride this, this wave, man. I don't want to get caught up on the shore. I just want to enjoy it. Let's keep moving. Let's keep it going. It feels good, man. Coming into this little section over here with all the home farms, feels great, man. I'm over in there in corporate, you know, corporate cannabis world on the other side. It's tough. It's tough. I'm, I'm, I'm still with the, uh, uh, the tablecloth, you know. I don't have the full booth build out. You know, I didn't pay for somebody to come in and build my structure. I came in with a tablecloth. And that's it. You know, a little banner. Trade show, right? Trade show. Yeah. I wish we could go back to putting the pounds on the table and not having so much regulation. This ounce bullshit here, what the fuck is that, man? I could go to a Walmart, man, and we could fill up the truck, man. It's crazy. An ounce is nothing. These people are gonna wish they could go home with so much more weed. What does the world need to know about uh, Northern California cannabis culture? Just a couple sentences, please. What's huh. the message, my brother? The one thing, you need to come visit and come smoke with us. You need to come visit and come experience the culture of Northern California. That's really what it's all about, visiting in person. You can come and you can buy weed all over Northern California legally, wherever you're at in the world. Come to California. We have a wild, wild culture when it comes to it, man. Enjoy, man. People got bud everywhere. Live it.